Something special about the Barbarians convince everyone to stay here for an extra week for this game. Yeah, I think it's just uh, the enjoyment that you get from from playing uh, playing the, the rugby and the style of rugby that we play here. Uh, the weeks are always very enjoyable, and you get the opportunity to, to mix and, and 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 have a bit of a social uh, social meetings with guys that you're usually locking horns with. So I think from that point of view, it's great just to to meet players from different countries uh, that you probably would never get the opportunity to do. I guess for yourself, captain as well. Yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. Um, I think few people must have turned it down first for them to, to come to me. But uh, this is my fourth time that I played. The will be my fourth time uh, playing for the Barbarians, and uh, it's a week that I, I really embrace and uh, I enjoy. Um, and then to be given captaincy is obviously a huge honour. For any Australian beating South Africa, no matter where and for what team you're playing for, it's something that you always look forward to. Oh, you, you look forward to winning. I think. Um, so, you know, whatever result happens, I think the biggest thing about the group is that you always uh, have a good week, you enjoy each other's company and then you have a crack for 80 minutes and uh, hopefully we get the result we're after. I think uh, we get a bit of advice off the Kiwi boys how to win there. Uh, obviously they had a bit of a win, uh, so hopefully we'll, we'll get one as well. The England game was a little unfortunate. You know, they, they completely outplayed us, but, uh, you know, we weren't probably as prepared as we needed to be for that game. But, yeah, I think the French win was, was a massive one for us and hopefully uh, give us a lot of confidence going into next year. A lot of things for them uh, came off and the style of football I think that they played, we weren't ready for. So from that point of view, we're underprepared. You know, we did everything and we worked hard. We, we, you know, you approach our game like it's a mass, you know, one of your biggest games, as it always is at Twickenham, and, and you knew it was going to be tough. But I think the style of football probably caught us off guard. Now everyone's thoughts turn to the World Cup. It's it's less than a year to go. How do you feel this Australian side is set with uh, with the time ticking down in months rather than years? Yeah, I mean it's very exciting. Uh, even talking about it, you know, you're used to just talking about it where it's a couple of years away. But as you say, it's a few months and I think we're heading in the right direction. Do you still see New Zealand as the team to beat on home soil? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, at home they're incredibly tough. Um, and they've obviously got a lot of pressure on them uh, to perform well. And I think, you know, they've been number one in the world for a number of years now for, for every reason that they're, they're the most consistent uh, side you know, going around each week they perform, they play good rugby, so yeah, they're, they're probably the favourites and I think they deserve to be. Are the, are the Northern Hemisphere sides getting their game together just in time for the World Cup, do you think? Yeah, and I think they always do, they, 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 um, they peak at the right times and even you look at 2007, everyone I think in England was, was riding off the England side, they went all the way to the final, so uh, you can never really see how someone's going until you get into those do or die stages because you can play the most prettiest rugby in those pool stages and then once you come to the, the finals, the knockout stages, all you have to do is win. You don't need to be pretty and some sides are better than that than others. I guess England are uh, seemingly getting their act together. One person they have lost is, uh, is Danny Cipriani, who's heading over to the Queensland Reds. I mean, how do you think his, uh, his arrival, do you, think he'll, do you think he'll have a good impact in the, in the game down under? Yeah, I'm sure he will. Uh, he'll learn a lot, I think, obviously, with... You know, the psyche behind you know Southern Hemisphere, especially the Australian guys, how they, they like to play. Um, hopefully, he, he plays poorly against us because uh, it means we're going well. But yeah, I think he'll, it, if nothing else, he'll enjoy himself uh, and he'll learn a lot. I've played him before in, in a Test match, so it's um, you know I know the, the quality of player he is. I think uh, whenever you whenever you, you talk about an individual or an ego getting greater than the team needs then you're in the wrong spot anyway. So for us, and especially for me, if I was playing against him, I wouldn't really be worried about outplaying him. Uh, I'm more worried about our team outplaying theirs. I think um, just adjusting, getting to know the style of, of play and, and the dynamics, how the, how the boys tick and, and things like that, it, uh, it can be difficult. But as you say, it's exciting. Uh, it's a new wave, especially from the backline point of view in Australia. So I think that's an exciting time. When you first came in or when I first came into international rugby, you just did your job um, you know, because you wanted to be there next week and you just wanted to do your best for, you, for the country. Whereas these guys will come out and they'll be trying things in test matches. They haven't even tried a training. Uh, so it just shows the confidence that they got and the skill level they've got as well.